It's another edition of Scoops with Danny Mac on Fox 2, and we do this every Sunday night at 1030. I'm Dan McLaughlin. My guests will include John Kelly, the voice of the St. Louis Blues. The NHL season is back, and I thought this was the perfect time to ask John, what was it like growing up the son of the legendary Dan Kelly? He himself, John, is turned into one of the best in the business. Ben Fredrickson will also be a part of the show. Ben of the Post-Dispatch will check in, give his thoughts on year one of the Eli Drinkwitz era down in Columbia, the upcoming baseball season, hockey season, and the college basketball season. Can they get through it? And finally, we'll get into slew hoops. St. Louis University Billikens basketball coach Travis Ford will be my guest, now in his fifth season with the Bills. And he's taken slew from the bottom of the A-10 conference to the top 25 of the recent college basketball rankings. Now, they've been shut down because of COVID, but he has his program on the rise here in town. They are considered one of the best in the country. Local players making a difference, the top 25, and a chance to make a run in the tournament with the Billikens. Let's bring in the head coach of the St. Louis University Billikens, and that is Travis Ford, who's done just an incredible job, as we just showed you of guiding the Billikens into the top 25. And coach, what does that mean to you? First of all, great to see you. Uh, what does that mean to you from where you took this program over, which was kind of bare bones, and now you're in the top 25? What does that mean to you? Yeah, it, uh, it, uh, it means a lot. There's no question. It, uh, it, it was kind of a, a goal of ours before the season to try to break the top 25. Um, so it, it's great for the program. There's no doubt. It's, 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 it's a great accomplishment for these young men, a part of the team right now, as we've talked about it though, you know, it doesn't mean anything other than, you know, what, it, as far as it doesn't mean a lot going forward, as far as we got to continue to win basketball games, we got to continue to, to hopefully climb the ladder in, in the top 25, but it means a lot as far as, uh, the accomplishments thus far, how far we've brought the program. Uh, and, you know, it's always, you know, uh, it, it always means a lot to be a part of the top 25. It started, though, with Hassan French. It started with Jordan Goodwin. What have those two kids meant to you and personally, and, and what have they meant to your program? Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, these two young men kind of have brought our program along. Uh, they took a chance on us when, you know, uh, we were at, uh, we were at the bottom of the league when we took over and they believed in the future. They believed in the vision that we had for our program and kind of took a chance. And those no question are the two that have elevated us to be able to be in the top 25 and be in something special like this. And, you know, uh, it, uh, you know, these two guys have, uh, have meant so much to our program. In terms of those two, they've said, Hey, you know what, we could come back to SLU, but we're going to go on and, and see what the pros look like. Could you describe what those two could do beyond SLU and, and looking at the professional ranks? You, you have coached guys that have gone to the NBA, gone to Europe. What could those, those two guys do in, in the pro ranks? Yeah, there's no question that these two young men are going to make money playing basketball, do it for a living. Um, you know, they both have really improved their game over the four years here. Uh, you look at a guy like Jordan Goodwin who can affect the game in so many ways. Now he's really knocking down threes, uh, can play multiple positions for you. Uh, but he's a guy that if I was a if I was an NBA coach or or a franchise, I would want him on my team for the fact just when you put him in the game, something positive is going to happen. You always want somebody like that. Very very similar to Marcus Smart, who I coached at Oklahoma State. He just brings tangibles that other people just can't do. Um, you know, a lot of times may even call it the dirty type work. He, he's, he's able to defend at a high level. He can score at a high level. He makes other people around him and he just has a competitive motor that's contagious to everyone else. And somebody's going to want that on their team. Hassan French, same thing. You look at a physical presence that's uh, probably one of the best one-on-one -on -one players on our team, uh, two time, uh, you know, all defensive player in the A-10 can block shots, can guard multiple positions uh, can bring the ball up the court as you see him do, uh, you know, on our team. But just two very, uh, two very good players who who can affect the game in multiple multiple ways. Coach, I think one of the great things that you've done at SLU is that you have recruited St. Louis. So we're seeing Bradley Beal, we're seeing 
uh, Tatum. We're seeing then the kids that you're getting to your program, and it excites the basketball fan here in St. Louis. Did you realize that the talent was here in this community as much so now that as the coaches slew that maybe you didn't realize at Oklahoma State or some of the other places you've been? No, you know, it's it's uh, one of, been one of the pleasant surprises. I knew of, you know, the great basketball out of St. Louis, but now that I've been here and kind of entrenched myself in the community and gotten to know high school coaches, AU coaches, uh, I didn't realize just what great uh, high school uh, coaches and, and, and talent there is at many levels. It's all over the city. It's it's uh, it's all over the state of Missouri. There's a lot of really good players, very talented players, come from great programs. That's one of the things I've enjoyed. You know, it's been tough during this COVID time. We haven't been able to go out and recruit and go into the gyms. But uh, prior to that, you know, being able to go to a couple, two or three high school games a night uh, and see players play and uh, just see the gyms packed and the love for high school basketball in the state uh, is really is, is a lot of fun to be a part of. But, I, you know, I didn't. The talent is even better than I even anticipated. Uh, we have a lot of really good young talent around the city and in the state. Um, you know, so that makes uh, that makes it, uh, you know, easier for us as far as recruiting is concerned. And in terms of recruiting, how is this? changed life for Travis Ford and other coaches going forward. How do you think this is going to change what you do going forward? I think it's going to, it's been changed a lot. We haven't been able to be out on the road or bring players in. Uh, and then the other part you got to add to it is the new transfer rules that are about to go into place. So that's going to even change recruiting quite a bit, especially in the high school ranks, uh, because there's going to be so many players you know, that uh, that you look at that could be in the transfer portal. Recruiting's changed over the last year or so like like it never has before. And, Coach, I'll wrap it up with this. How are you and your kids and your staff, uh, how are you guys all holding up through all this? Yeah, it's been tough. You know, we've had our challenges. Uh, we understand this is the world we live in, so you try to just take it one day at a time, be very, very positive, control the things that we can control is a big thing for us. Uh, you know, we, as everybody knows, we've kind of gone through the COVID has kind of gone through our team a little bit. So we're anxious to get back out on the court. Um, but more importantly, try to just keep everybody safe, but it, uh, it has been a challenge. No question about it. Really appreciate your time, coach. Can't wait to see you guys get back out there. Thanks so much. Thank you. Coming up, growing up around St. Louis blues hockey and specifically having your dad as one of the best ever to call the sport, John Kelly. The Voice of the Blues is next on Scoops with Danny Mac. Scoops with Danny Mac is brought to you by Schnucks, Lou Fuse, Royal Banks of Missouri, and Ryan Kelly, the home loan expert. Welcome back to Scoops with Danny Mac on Fox 2. A reminder, there's daily content on the website, scoopswithdannymac.com. Podcasts, features, articles. If you've missed Bernie Miklas and his writing, you can see it all daily on scoopswithdannymac.com. Duke behind the net, Sutter scores! Ryan Sutter, the save, loose puck, what a poke out of the score! Hit on goal, shoot, he scores! Babbitt gets his 50th of the year! And listen to this crowd for Mike Cleote, a standing ovation for two great saves on pain. Those are the outstanding great calls that we all love and know of Dan Kelly. And pictured there, a nine-year-old John Kelly, and he has carried on the tradition so well. The outstanding play-by-play -play voice, of the St. Louis Blues. John, when you see that picture, what comes to mind of a nine-year-old John Kelly with Dan Kelly? Well, you know, Dan, he, he was my, not only my, my father, but my broadcasting idol. So at that age, it was a special treat for me to come up and sit with him in the broadcast booth. And that probably was one of the first times that he allowed me to come up. Um, I, I got to believe that after the game, we got on a Blues charter and went to Chicago or something. So it was a very special night. I remember taking the picture. Uh, the photographer was up to our left, and 
And it's a picture that I know that I cherish and my mom cherishes and I know my dad loves. So uh, I certainly do remember taking the picture, although it was a long time ago. No question. I hear so much of your dad in you. Um, how much did you pick up from your dad in your call and what you try to do today? Well, you know, Dan, as, as a young guy, like a lot of Blues fans, I would lay in bed at night and I had a little black transistor radio and I'd listen to Blues games. And back then in the early days, every game started at eight o'clock at night. So except for the weekend games, I would listen at home on my transistor radio. So I think a lot of it came from just listening to him night after night after night, year after year. And, you know, sort of like speaking and learning to speak, you, you pick up habits and phrases and, and, and the things that he would do. Now, when I decided I wanted to be a broadcaster, Dan, one thing my father did tell me was, you know, don't try to copycat every single phrase that I have. He, of course, was known for he shoots his scores and he would say shooting or the drive and things like that. So I, I intentionally try to steer away from a lot of those phrases. But certainly, I think a lot of the things I, I do have in my, my broadcast, I, I think a lot of it is just naturally from listening to him night after night after night. You can understand more than anybody else, second generation broadcasters sometimes, they say, hey, I want to get out of the, the shadow of my father, but I've talked to you about this. You've really embraced it. You're like, no, man, that, that's my idol. That's the guy I love. That's my dad. And oh, by the way, he just happens to be a great broadcaster. So I embrace it. You've really embraced it all the way through. Well, I, I have embraced it. And I think the reason is, Dan, as a, as a young guy, I, I played hockey as a kid and like most young athletes, you realize you're not going to go any further than high school or maybe junior college if you're lucky. So I, I love the game so much. It was a way to stay in the game and seeing his lifestyle, you know, going to, to hockey rinks and baseball stadiums and football stadiums. Um, and I would tag along the, the older I got. You know, I said to myself, you know, this is a pretty good life and a pretty good lifestyle. So I, I guess I got the broadcasting bug in junior high and. Um, I wanted to be like him. Um, in my mind, no one will ever be as great as, as he was as a hockey broadcaster. But I think that's why. I just loved his his lifestyle and what he did. And I also loved the game of hockey. So it was the natural fit. And I got fortunate. And I, I've been able to do this for now 30 years in the NHL. How many fans in St. Louis have come up to you and said, your dad taught me the game? He's the reason why I love the Blues. It's not because of Brett Hall. It's not because of Oates. It's not because of Federko. It's because of Dan Kelly. Um, if I had a dollar for every fan that came up to me, Dan, um, you and I could probably go on a nice uh, trip somewhere. Uh, you know, seriously, <laughs> it happens all the time. And, you know, he passed away in 1989. So it's been over 30 years. And fans to this day come up to me and say, they became fans of the blues and the game of hockey by listening to uh, my dad and Gus Kyle on Camelox radio. So to me, Dan, as a broadcaster, uh, you know, you can win awards and, and you can have longevity and you can have a good following. But to me, the ultimate compliment is if somebody said they learned the sport and they became fans of the sport because of you as a broadcaster, to me, there's not a higher compliment. And my father still to this day gets all of those. Unfortunately, he did not see the Blues win the Stanley Cup. You got to experience that, but you brought the cup to his gravesite with your family. How emotional was that for you? What did that mean to your family? Well, I always said that if the Blues did win it and, and, I, and I was alive and I was around, that I would do that if I could. And the Blues and the NHL were so great to, to let our family do that. And my mother was there, my wife and my, my kids. Um, my sister was there and it was very, it was very poignant and very um, touching to me. As a matter of fact, my sister, Susan, she brought some audio cassettes, Dan, of some of my dad's calls when he was an announcer for the Blues. So we were sitting there on a beautiful morning around eight in the morning with the Stanley Cup next to his gravestone and his calls in the background. And it was, it was a very special time. And I'm so glad we got to do that. And my final question would be, what do you think it would mean to Dan Kelly to know that the St. Louis Blues have won the Stanley Cup? Oh, man, he Dan, he loved this team. Um, you know, he came in the second year, as you know, uh, the great Jack Buck was the announcer the first year. 
and and as you also in the Blues made the finals the first three years in the league. I al- I always sort of joke that you know my dad probably thought, hey, this is easy. This is going to happen every year, but it, it didn't happen again until 2019, as we know. So uh, yeah, he um, he bled blue, no question, and it it certainly would have been one of the greatest days of his life. And man, oh man, he would have loved to go down Market Street in that parade and and celebrate like all the other great fans. It, it certainly would have been a, a a great, great moment for him, no question. John, I mean this sincerely. You know this. You and I are such close friends. The apple does not fall far from the tree. You are one of the best in sports, one of the best in hockey, and we are lucky. And I mean, we are lucky to have you here in St. Louis. Thanks for doing this. Have a great season. I appreciate your time. All right. Anytime, Dan. Thank you for having me. That's John Kelly. Ben Fredrickson is coming up next. Missouri has knocked off LSU. First year coach Eli Drinkwitz has a signature victory over the defending national champs. That was one of the great wins this season for Mizzou football. Year one for Eli Drinkwitz as the Missouri Tigers pulled off an upset against the defending national champions LSU. Let's bring into the conversation Ben Fredrickson of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. You can hear him every Friday on Scoops with DannyMac.com and Ben, uh, it was maybe a sign of things to come, a signature win in year one for Eli Drinkwitz. Pretty impressive, Dan. And and while LSU did not turn out to be a national championship caliber team after that, um, it doesn't take away the anything from the win for the Tigers. You don't get to retroactively say wins were not big wins. That was a top 25 team, a signature win for, for Eli Drinkwitz. And I think it really was a sign of on the field progress for the Tigers. They had had such a tough opening to their schedule um, they got that win at home on a on a goal line stand that will be remembered for for a long time and it showed LSU was moving in the in the wrong direction after one of the best seasons in college football history the year before but it showed Missouri was moving in the right direction and I think Eli Drinkwitz continued to build off that in recruiting um, and on the field success and it's part of the reason Tigers fans are feeling really good about their their second season with Eli Drinkwitz. I love this we get to jump around with Ben Fredrickson so baseball right around the corner We've had the winter warm-up this weekend. Tell me there's an outfielder of the St. Louis Cardinal that is going to emerge this year. Who do you like? Well, the easy bet is Dylan Carlson, Dan. I think they play him every day, move him around. That's fine, but he's got to be in the lineup. They, they think this guy can be a special player. We've seen flashes of it. Let him play. The, the guy that I'm most interested in, not named Dylan Carlson, is Lane Thomas. We haven't seen much of Lane Thomas, and, and neither season was exactly his fault. He got hit on the wrist with an inside pitch. Two years ago, last year he gets COVID and was really not the same coming back from that. And we saw that on the field. So if there's one guy that I'm excited about getting more opportunity, it's Lane. I can understand why some Cardinals fans are maybe not thrilled about uh, the internal options. And I can understand why folks aren't thrilled about more opportunities for a guy like Tyler O'Neill, who's who's played worse in each of his past three seasons offensively. But Lane Thomas hasn't really gotten a fair shot, and I think he could get one this year. And and I think what we have seen of him when he's healthy has been impressive. So I'll pick Lane, but the obvious choice would be Dylan Carlson. College basketball, do we get through a season? We got through college football. Do we get through college basketball? We've seen locally hit with COVID. Do we get through a college basketball season? Yeah, we're going to get through it. And it might not be pretty, but college football season wasn't always pretty either. If they were going to pull the plug on this thing, they would have done it by now. Um, They're going to get to March in whatever way it looks like. There might be teams in the NCAA tournament that have played a a, a minimum of like 13 games, and that's going to be crazy, and and people will probably be complaining about that. But they'll bubble up for the NCAA tournament in Indianapolis. They will play it, and we'll all watch, and they will make the TV money, and that will be important for college basketball. So it it will be like this until we get there. Stop, start, teams with long breaks. But they'll come up with enough teams to play the tournament, and they'll find a way to get through it. And it will be what we're all watching in March, one way or the other. I'm fired up. The National Hockey League is back. General sense, what are you anticipating from the St. Louis Blues? I think they're motivated, Dan. I mean, listening to them talk in training camp, they were saying what we were all thinking when they were in the bubble. They didn't look like they wanted to be there. They looked like they were distracted and and uninterested after their Stanley Cup run of trying to make this playoff bubble feel like the real thing. Now they're saying those same things. Braden Shin said early in camp, hey, we only have so many opportunities to win a Stanley Cup and we let one get away. 
Um, they've been motivated by that. Their 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 training camp was energetic, um, enthusiastic. I think that will show when the season begins here. And, and I think they feel like they they have a championship caliber team. All right, it's my show. It's my final question. <laughs> I get to ask you anything I want. Give me one athlete that you're going to put on the spot that you're looking forward to watching in 2021. Oh, man, um, that's a great one. Um, I, I'm going to be optimistic and say it'll be Yadier Molina, Dan, in a, in a Cardinals uniform. Um, Yadier Molina has to get this figured out where he's back in St. Louis. The Cardinals got to step up. But if he comes back, whether it's a two-year deal, a one-year deal with an option, who knows what it will look like. I do think it will happen. But if he's back and getting paid well, then he needs to perform. And I think he's uh, he's got to deliver on the field. He can't fall off. So it's going to be weird if it happens to see Yadier Molina in another uniform. I don't think that's the case, but I think he will uh, once again try to defy father time, and, and I'm not betting against him when it comes to that. Hey, Ben, great stuff. Thanks so much. Happy New Year to you. For Ben Fredrickson, John Kelly, and Travis Ford, I'm Dan McLaughlin. We do this every Sunday night on Fox 2. This is Scoops with Danny Mack, and we'll catch up next Sunday.